In Gaza City, 100,000 Hamas supporters at the funeral of Yahya Ayash, who've pledged to wreak bloody revenge on Israel for the death of the group's chief bomb maker on Friday. As the coffin made its way through the streets of Gaza City and a heavy Palestinian police guard, scuffles broke out as hundreds pressed to get a closer view. The crowds chanted revenge, revenge, there are hundreds more like Yahya Ayash, and warned Israeli Premier Shimon Peres that Hamas was baying for Jewish blood. Since his death, 30-year-old Ayash is seen as a martyr by Hamas supporters. After observing a minute's silence, the armed wing of Hamas, Izzedine Al-Qassam, fired a salute into the air with automatic weapons, injuring two of the mourners. Israel has sealed off the West Bank and Gaza Strip indefinitely, fearing reprisals by Hamas militants following the death of Yahya Ayash. Tens of thousands of Palestinians who cross the border every day to work in Israel are stranded by the move. The clampdown comes two days after Israeli security forces closed off areas, now under PLO rule, to Israelis. Israel's most wanted fugitive was killed on Friday in Gaza by a booby-trapped cellular phone. It's provoked an outpouring of mourning even among Palestinians who weren't sympathetic to the Hamas cause. The West Bank and Gaza were last sealed off in the wake of the assassination of Premier Yitzhak Rabin in November. NATO has announced it will begin foot patrols of the tense Serb-held suburbs of Sarajevo. The decision was made in an attempt to reassure people whose homes are due to come under Muslim control in the coming weeks. Serb civilians say they can't trust government promises that they'll be safe and don't believe NATO can protect them either. NATO officials, for their part, say they'd already promised to beef up their presence in the suburbs following the recent spate of abductions of Bosnian civilians by separatist Serbs. NATO's greatest challenge in its year-long mission will no doubt be supervising the handover to the government of the neighborhoods the Serbs used to besiege and bombard Sarajevo for three and a half long years. In Bosnia, a policeman from the Croatian sector of Mostar has died from gunshot wounds in what's thought to be a revenge attack for yesterday's shooting of two Muslim policemen. The EU administration has appealed for calm in the wake of the shooting which it says was carried out from the Muslim run east of the town. In Mostar, both sides live divided by the Revolution Boulevard, despite a federation between Sarajevo and Zagreb, which came into force last year. The mayor of the Muslim-held East says the latest attack could sink the Dayton Peace Accord. Ethnic tension has deepened since Croat police killed a Muslim youth on New Year's Eve. The firebombing of a Turkish travel agency in Berlin on Friday night is the latest attack to be linked to a wave of violent prison revolts in Turkey. Two days ago, arsonists had attacked Turkish targets in the Cologne and Hamburg areas, while in the Greek capital Athens, a group of Kurds allegedly smashed the windows of the Turkish Airlines offices. The protests are said to have been sparked by Thursday's deaths of three prison rioters in Istanbul. The men were reportedly leftist militants or Kurds from the banned PKK party. The PKK has been blamed for numerous firebombings in Germany over the past years. Latest opinion polls in Portugal show the gap narrowing between the two leading candidates for next week's presidential election, a vote in which a successor to the veteran president Mario Soares is to be chosen. Socialist frontrunner Jorge Sampaio, ex-mayor of Lisbon, appears to have former Premier Anibal Cavaco Silva close on his heels, but is nevertheless still in the lead. The margin of victory predicted by the polls varies greatly, as do voters' opinions. Some find Sampaio more sincere, while the Social Democrat is seen to have have more international prestige. Yeah. Communist Geronimo Souza is apparently trailing far behind. In fact, his party is due to meet on Monday to announce the withdrawal of his candidature and encourage sympathizers to vote for Sampaio. Speculation on Greece's political future is rising as not only the 76-year-old prime minister remains in intensive care, but his wife has also been admitted into hospital. While the Socialist Party was discussing possible candidates for the premiership on Friday, Dimitra Liani was diagnosed with hepatitis B and advised not to visit her critically ill husband. Which may well be good news for Greece's conservative opposition. It has repeatedly called on the Socialists to choose a successor to Andreas Papandreou. Now some analysts say that with the politically ambitious Liani away from him, it may be easier for Papandreou to be asked to step down. 
President Saddam Hussein's reaction to the UN decision to maintain sanctions on Iraq has been a declaration stating his country is still willing to cooperate with the organization. In an address marking the 75th anniversary of the founding of the Iraqi army, the leader said he'd ordered that the utmost effort be made to comply with the UN resolutions. Resolutions which lay out the conditions under which the five-year-old sanctions imposed after the 1990 invasion of Kuwait could be lifted. An easing of the embargo on oil exports, part of the wide-ranging sanctions on Baghdad, is linked to the eradication of Iraq's weapons of mass destruction. Four people have died in southeast Bulgaria following the collapse of a footbridge which hurled some 200 people into the river below. The incident took place around midday local time in the village of Elkovo. The inhabitants had been standing on the bridge watching a ceremony traditionally performed on St. Jordan's Day. A priest casts a crucifix into the river and volunteers dive to retrieve it. Women and small children were amongst the hundreds of spectators, many of whom appeared to be badly injured. In Hamburg, about 50,000 Germans have wrapped up and braved the cold conditions to practice winter sports on frozen Lake Ulster. If the ice proved too much hard work, glue vine and hot dogs were available. It's the first time in five years that the lake has frozen hard enough for the winter fair to take place. In neighbouring France, black ice on the roads virtually halted traffic in Alsace and Lorraine. Even the salt lorries had difficulties doing their work. But French authorities say that the chaos caused by the black ice has been felt on the region's roads rather than in hospital casualty wards. Only minor bone fractures have been reported.